It is an honor and a privilege to be here this evening, and I know most of you, when you see the worship pastor, you think she's about to preach on worship, and how I wish I was. <laughs> but when I asked God, what does he want me to share this evening, he spoke to me and, and said, your testimony. And, you know, I've, I've heard people up here talk about their testimony, but I'm a very, you know, quiet person, if you really know me. Uh, don't talk a lot, so that, that's a lot to ask me to share my testimony, but I am going to share part of my testimony, and then we're going to go into the Word on, um, and show how God just really worked miracles through the Word, and I hope you all are blessed. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for allowing us to be here, to be in your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. We thank you, Father, that no one can stay the same in your presence. No one can stay the same when the word of God takes root in their hearts. So, Father, I just ask that you speak through me, Lord God. I am a vessel for you this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I am a preacher's kid, pastor's kid. Most of you probably don't even know. Raised in the Pentecostal church. Uh, church on Sunday, prayer on Tuesday, Bible study on Wednesday, just church, church, church. But I will say that it really didn't, um, I didn't really establish a relationship with God until I got into college. And so getting through those first couple of years of college, and then by that third year, it was when I, I decided I really want to have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. So at that time, I found a church, a home church, started attending this church. Um, coming from the Pentecostal background, it was very different. It was what you call one of the, the word of faith churches. Um, and it was my first introduction into praise and worship. So I heard praise and worship music. I said, oh, that's, that's different. That's kind of cute. And I decided I want to get plugged in to, to what God is doing here. So audition for the music department. And of course, landed in the worship area. <laughs> it was not my choosing, but that's where I landed. And so I, I got in the worship choir at that time. And then eventually on the worship team, and then eventually I met another guy who was in ministry at the same church, and we got married. And at that time, then that's when prophetic words just started pouring into us, especially over me about worship, got how God was going to use me in a great way, not, not just for a certain people, but for the people, in a great way in worship. So I'm growing in worship. started off as a very uh, timid singer, I would say, in, in front of people. Um, but God just really began to, to open me up, releasing the fear, and um, things are going great, you know, from, from what it looked like on the outside, things are going great on my job. Um, I'm sitting here, you know, with three wonderful girls, got blessed with three wonderful girls, and things just seem perfect. But when you begin to peel back the layers, what people did not know was that I had entered a marriage that was abusive. I was being abused mentally, physically, any way possible. And so when you're in the church and you're serving and you're popular, that is something you keep to yourself. But what it was doing was bringing me to a place of depression, a place of being suicidal, just trying to hide it. So even as I began to open up to people in the church, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I, I appreciate faith, but sometimes uh, when we use our faith in the wrong way. So people would tell me, you just don't have enough faith. If that were me, that wouldn't be happening to me because I would call on my God and he would save me. And, and what that did was put me in a place where I was confused. So I said, God, I know who you are. So why is this happening to me? And the more I would serve, the deeper I went into worship, the deeper I went into my relationship, it got worse. It was purely demonic. And so I got to a place where I said, it's me. <laughs> it's not you, God. It's me. There's something wrong with me. And just, just got to a place where I, I really just began to question, you know, uh, should I even be here? I just want to go to sleep and never wake up. Long story short, my marriage ended. And when my marriage ended, I detached myself from everything, including the words that had been spoken over me. I, I had to find a new church home. I had to now 
raised three girls on my own. I'm financially on my own. And I remember talking to my friend. I said, uh, what's next? <laughs> Where do I go next? I, I have to find a church. I, I, I have to continue to seek God. And she said, what about the Eterni Etern Eternity Church? For those of you who don't know, there used to be a play here. Um, and so we just knew this was the Eternity Church. So I said, okay, I'll go. I'll give it a try, see what's up there. So I came in that Sunday. I sat right in that area. And as I was sitting there, it, the, back then it was called Atlanta City Church. It was ACC. So I'm sitting there, and, and I felt like this was a place of peace a place where I can be restored, a place where I can be healed. So I had no plans of joining any type of ministry because at that point I was in survival mode. I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I did the ministry thing. I am done. I just need to raise my daughters and, and just get back on my feet. But back then at the time, Pastor Rick was the pastor here. He made a call from the pulpit. He said, if you have a gift, I need you to come forward and to use your gift. And so I said, eh, okay, no harm there. It's just a little choir. I can get up there and I can sing. So I did. And, and for those of you who know me, I can be sitting in a room and no one even know I'm there. That's just the type of person I am. They're laughing. But yes, I, so I sat in the choir. They knew I was there, but I, I was not the, hey, look at me type person. Hey, I used to do this. Hey, I should do this. That wasn't me. I was like, you called me, I'm going to give you my voice, and that is it. Don't ask me to do anything else. So I sat about a year in the worship choir, just receiving the word, just, just getting back to understanding who God is. And I remember having a conversation with some people who were in the choir at the time about music. People were submitting music. And the Holy Spirit said, submit your music. Back when, um, when I was married, there was an assignment my husband at the time had to do, and he had to write music. And I ended up writing the songs, most of the songs that he had to write. And so I said, oh, I have a few songs. I'll submit the songs. So I did. I, I, I gave them to Pastor Kathy. She was the worship pastor at the time. And she probably doesn't even remember this, but, it, but it's quite funny how the story goes. So I gave her my CD, and a few days later, she emailed me. And she didn't, she didn't really say much about the song. She said, hey, is this you singing? <laughs> and I said, yes, that's me singing. She said, you have a mic audition on Thursday. <laughs> and I said, okay, fine. Whether I'm in the choir, whether I'm on mic, it doesn't mean anything. So I came to the mic audition, and then they said, hey, you're going to be on mic on Sunday morning. I said, okay, that's fine. doesn't matter to me. And then as we were having our run through that Sunday morning, I'll never forget, we were singing a Kirk Franklin song. And Pastor Rick at the time looked over. He said, I want her to lead the song. And I said, okay, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll lead the song. And so as I'm in the middle of worship service, and I was leading this song, when I threw my hand up for a signal, uh, that the worship leader telling everybody where we're going, that's when it hit me. I said, wait a minute. I've been tricked. I've been bamboozled. The Lord, he, he snuck me back up here without me even noticing. And so after that, I said, Lord, I already told you, I'm done. <laughs> no more ministry. I am done. And I continued to be on the, you know, leading worship. I'm like, that's as far as I'm going to go. And then I, this was also at the time where we were establishing the campus in Peachtree City. And, and I'll never forget, they came to me and said, Hey, can you help us out in Fairburn? Can you help us out and, and take over some of the things, the choir? And, and I said, eh, I, I can help out because I'm thinking this is temporary. We're just establishing a campus. Things will go back to normal. Well, it never did. And at some point, I'll never forget, I got a folder. Shelly gave me this folder. She probably doesn't even remember. It was the folder for the multimedia team. She said, here, this is yours. And that's when I had it out with God. I, it, it, while all of this is going on, remember, I'm a single mom. I'm still having single mom issues. I'm still bringing, you know, we were, we were having two services here at one point. I'm still dragging my young girls here by myself, uh, running this thing, 
and I'm, I'm still having financial problems. I'm still having emotional problems. And I said, Lord, I did not sign up for all of this. I have, I, you know, I told you I would sing. I did not sign up for all of this. But then, you know, for me, when I, when I get frustrated with the Lord, we talk. But when he's quiet, that's when I kind of know, okay, I can say what I want to say, but he's, he's not changing his mind. So I got to the point of total submission, just saying, fine, Lord, whatever your will is, I'll do it. And, you know, you know the rest of the story uh, ended up, you know, just continuing to, to be over this campus, eventually becoming the worship pastor. And so I, I do want to share some scriptures of some things that I went through during that journey, and that's just a part of my journey. That's, that's like, if I were to give it a title, that's like part one, chapter one, because you know the journey never stops. It, it, it doesn't stop. But the first point I want to share is God gives us a glimpse into our destination, but we must trust him on the journey. So in Genesis 37, 5 through 7, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheep rose and stood up while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. So basically he said, hey, I had a dream. You're going to bow down to me. So what do you think happened after he shared that? Did they bow down to him immediately? Nope. He, he, he got sold to the Egyptians. He ended up in jail 20 years later is when it manifested. So I thought about that. Even when I received the words back when I was in my 20s, I'm working hard on the worship thing. I, oh, you, you said I'm called to worship. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I have goals. 20 years later was when I became a worship pastor. So again, he, he, he may share a destination with you. He may tell you a little bit of where you're going. Don't feel like you have to rush. Don't feel like you, you've got to work hard to make it happen. Trust him on the journey. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Number two, God is my provider, not man. Psalms 145 Verse 15, the eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every little thing. Now, this is, a, this is like a, a sensitive topic because I do know that God uses people to bless. But at the same time, when he's using people to bless you, make sure you understand where that blessing is coming from. As a single parent, and, and you don't even have to be single to feel this, but when the pressure comes, Especially in your finances, you, if, if your heart isn't right, you're going to start looking to man. Why are you having me serve, church? You need to give me a paycheck if I'm going to come and sing up here every week. What? Hey, government, you owe me something. Look at the situation I'm in. And there's a, there's a, that's why I said be careful because there's a difference in who you're looking to. God can use the government. He can use the church. But who are you looking to? Who, who are you putting pressure on? Are you putting pressure on the word? Or are you putting pressure on man like man is the one who's going to do it for you? Number three, God is the one who promotes, not man. Psalm 75, verse 6. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. It is God who judges. He brings one down. He is, exalts another. So when I shared that verse, remember, I was in the choir for a whole year, minding my own business. I went from the choir to worship leader in one week. One week. All out of obedience of God telling me to do something. So a lot of people feel like they have to do this. Hey, look at me. As the worship pastor, I literally have some people who come to me and say, I'm such and such from this church. And I would love to use my gift here. Well, great. Come join us in choir. Oh, no. I'm, I've, I've done choir before. I, I'm a worship leader. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> Not yet. You may be one, but if, if, you are, if you are expecting man to place you in a position, that's, that's, you're looking 
to the wrong place. Another example I want to give you, I won't go in and read the whole thing, but in, in 1 Samuel 16, we see where David was minding his own business as a shepherd. And, you know, his brothers were the ones, hey, look, you know, they probably more like this. Look at me. <laughs> but David didn't have to do that. When it was his time, God found him. In Genesis 39, we just talked about this with Joseph. He, you know, he didn't have to say, Hey, I had a dream about five years ago about people bowing down to me. Somebody needs to do something about that. He didn't have to do that. When it was his time, God found him. God never lost him. God knew where he was at the whole time. So no matter whether you're serving in the parking lot, whether you're, you're cleaning the building, whatever you're doing, God is the one who promotes, not man. Number four. Our setbacks, and I put this word in here, hiccups. Paulette brought a word on Sunday, and I said she's all in my, my sermon, but that's okay. Our setbacks don't surprise God or change his mind. Philippians 1.6, I'm convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. So, you know, when I was going through what I was going through, you, you know, you, you ever go through something and you feel like I have messed up so much. This thing is so messed up that anything that God thought he was going to do, he, he just can't do it at all. He, he's not surprised. You know, he, when, when he sat and spoke what was going to happen, he already knew all the detours and all the stuff. So he didn't change his mind. We, we may, you know, kind of drop in our faith a little bit, but he didn't change his mind. I, I, had, I went into survival mode. I went into, I don't have time to believe for anything, but being a mom and, and working on my job and all that good stuff. But God never changed his mind about what he said to me. Number five, obedience leads to unexpected breakthroughs and life-changing moments. Genesis 22, starting at verse 12. Do not, and this is when Abraham was, was um, about to sacrifice Isaac. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead to his, of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. So, you know, he, he was simply being obedient. And that is when his breakthrough came through. An, a, another one in Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 1. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Generase, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon said, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Hey, Felicia, I want you to, to, to go sing. Go submit your, your, your gifting to the house of God. Lord, I already did this. I did this before, but because you said it, I will obey. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled their boat so full that they began to sink. How many times have God asked us to do something? We said, been there, done that, tried that, didn't work. And we just dismissed it. But we see in this case where just simple obedience, simple obedience, it, things that we think are just small. Even, even when I heard the Holy Spirit say, submit your music. I could have argued about doing that. I had no idea of where that would take me. 
It, it, but simple things, you know, how many times have we heard simple things and we just walked away from it? So I had to align personally. They had to learn, still, still learning. This is a, a, a interesting thing I'm still learning. How to be obedient right away. I, I, I always share this story. There was one time um, I had uh, my wallet left somewhere, my purse. I always leave my purse in a certain place. And the Holy Spirit had told me at the time to move it. Uh, move your purse today. And I said, that's a great idea. I think next week I'm going to do that. And I got through doing what I was doing, and I came back to my purse, and it, everything seemed fine. But then when I got home, I realized my wallet was missing. <laughs> and I panicked, and I was looking, and I said, you told me. You told me to move my purse. And I said, that is a great idea. I will do that later. Simple obedience. Simple obedience uh, to God, I mean, it's, it just does amazing things. So that is my story. I was told to keep it short. Hopefully I kept it short enough. I stayed within my time frame. They giving me the thumbs up. But I, I, you know, I, my story really is, you know, I'm, tomorrow I turn 48. So I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even 50. I thought about that. I'm, I'm just like, starting the, the, the best part of my life. There's no telling where, where God is going to take me. Um, and I just want to encourage you, no matter what your past looks like, my past is ugly, and I still struggle from it. There, there are still times, even when preparing to talk, there were times where I said, I don't even want to think about it. it. It was so ugly. It's, I just can't even understand. You know, there are times where... Um, Inside of my home, I'll, I'll, I'll remember, you know, horrible things that happened in those spots. And I can't help but to cry, not out of sadness, but just out of, you have delivered me. And, and you didn't just deliver me. There's the, I, I'm in survival mode. I just need you to take care of me. But then there's the, I will take care of you, and I will do that and more. I will, I will exalt you. I will honor you. I will promote you. When you can't see a way, just trust me. Just follow me. And I believe that's what God is saying us, to us tonight. So I do want to close. And, and, and before I pray, I do want to ask, is there anyone um, who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Because you, you need him on this walk. I cannot imagine going through this walk and not having him there, carrying me, Lifting me up when I wanted to just sit out and when I wanted to just fall asleep and never wake up again, him, him making me get up. So if you don't know Jesus Christ right now, I invite you to come into a relationship with him. So if that's you, can you just lift your hand right now? Even we're not going to close our eyes. Just lift your hands if you're saying, hey, this is my, I'm ready to be in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So I believe everyone here is, is on that path in a relationship. And I do want to pray because I don't know where you're at in your journey. And I don't know uh, what's ahead of you next week. I don't know where you came from last year. If there are things that you have given up on or thrown away, I, I want you to remember that God is faithful. And, and, and just he will honor any word that ha he has spoken over your life. So let's pray. Father God, right now, I just thank you right now for the word of God that has come. Lord, I thank you that it has fallen on, on good ground. I thank you, Lord God, uh, that anyone who is thinking of quitting or giving up, I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you will be their joy. You will be the lifter of their head. I thank you, Lord God, that you will open doors for them that they thought were shut forever. I thank you, Lord God, that you will make their path straight when they feel crooked, Lord. You will be their voice in the desert. You will be the water that they thirst for. You would be everything, Lord God, as we look to you, as we trust you, Lord God, and not man, as we lean on you, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you are faithful, Lord, and that you are with everyone in this place. You with everyone who is watching right now on TV, on their phones, whatever, wherever they are hearing this word, Lord, you are with us all. So, Father, I just speak hope and peace in everyone right now. 
It's in Jesus' name, and I thank you for restoration. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church says amen.